I'm sorry to interrupt you. I would just like to say one thing that um, I really appreciate your leadership throughout all of this. Um, Swin, I think everybody should realize that you're doing this because you believe in the island and the cause that you have. You're not being paid for this. You're putting in your personal time and effort and I really appreciate all that you're doing. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And uh, you look, every, everyone's got a yeah, different you know, opinion and, and I'm okay with that. Uh, I have my opinions about everything in life as well. So it's, it's okay. <laughs> I, have, I have thick skin and um, this isn't just me. And, and you guys are gonna learn that through sort of this presentation. It, this isn't Swin uh, forcing his personal agenda on anyone. Uh, team has come together to work on this stuff. And we're going to tell you what we've been working on. And, and we'll go through, you know, options on things. Okay. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to just start. We'll call this the Hurricane Andy the town. town Hall um, on October 3rd, 2022. Uh, I want to introduce the, the leadership team, and as I introduce the leadership team, I, uh, I, and I don't know if all of them could make it on the Zoom, I'd like them to unmute, uh, because as we go through the presentation, they will take over and, and talk about some of the things that we're working on. So the leadership team that uh, has come together, and this one's not set in stone, we, we tend to add a person daily. Um, and it, it spans uh, what we feel are, you know, the major organizations, the major businesses on, on the island. It, it includes a, a tier of, you know, uh, all the property managers on the island. Um, so there's a lot of input uh, from, from, you know, all sorts. So, you know, whether you uh, trust Island Club or you, you, you trust Jen Parker, or you know your safety harbor club, you, your your people are included in this. Like this, this is not uh, something that we're not including discussion about. So, uh, yeah. So leadership team is is Swin Swinford. I'm with UCCA. Jeff Irvine with Safety Harbor Club. Duncan Rosen with Tortuga Properties. Mark Justice with Maj Con Contracting. Matt Wikes with the Island Club, Dustin King with the Island Club, Mike Phillips uh, with the Upper Captiva Fire District, and Tom Jenkins. Uh, in, in sort of ancillary parts of it, it also includes uh, Shally's, it includes Jim Parker, it includes Nicole Rossi, uh, it includes Boats and Fun, and, and as we can get to other people, we would like to have uh, Danny Davenport and or Mike Verona as a part of this group. Can we, can we mute? Thank you. Uh, I'm trying to mute. I, I don't know. I don't know. All right, I think we're good. Uh, we'd like to have Danny Davenport and or Mike Verona as part of this group because they're, um, they're gonna be essential to you know, this effort. Uh, and then uh, I don't know if I mentioned, all right, Tom Jenkins is part of it. So look, our, our goal, our initial goal is to fix the island infrastructure and supply chains to get the island moving towards a quick recovery. Currently, all the systems are broken. Um, those, you know, including but not limited to, we have no power on the island. We have no water due to no power. The only houses that have that are the ones that are currently running on generators. Many of those will run out of power in days. Um, at, at most, maybe another week to eight days. Scott, you need to listen to this too. Hey, can we mute? If everyone can mute until the end, that'd be great. Uh, we have scarce fuel availability. We are in need of diesel, gas, and propane. Uh, we're cut off from our home port of Pine Island. Um, there is some promising news there with the repairs being done on the Matt Lachey Bridge that it's possible that it'll be reconnected in the next five days. If that happens, it, it's a game changer and, and uh, very positive for our island. 
Uh, there are no barges running. Uh, Danny got uh, one of his barges up today. So there's one barge available that will start work. Uh, the other uh, two in the fleet or three in the fleet are questionable if they are in working order. I know at least one is not in working order. Uh, since we have no barges running, we have no trash service. Uh, with that break in, in the Matlache Road and Bridge, our supply chain from Pine Island is cut off. So even with barges, our supplies couldn't get there. Uh, our passenger ferries are not running. Uh, both passenger ferries, Island Club and uh, Island Girl. I don't have any sound here either. Hey, can we mute? Uh, both of those companies are assessing uh, their boats uh, if they are actually in working order. The hope is that they are and, and that it's possible they will start some limited runs of uh, Wait, employees in, in, my in the ne next couple of days. Um, along with that, we have a very limited number of captains available and working, and they're working under very stressful conditions uh, with equipment that's failing, either motors or broken props. We're, we're trying to help them find um, replacements for those things, and many with no homes or homes that have no power. They can't wash clothes and you know, get their own supplies. Hey, can we please stay muted, everyone? Uh, so uh, then additionally with that, we have fractured uh, supply chains, you know, from, you know, the food, water, the fuel that I mentioned, uh, our needs like uh, things like tarps, galvan galvanized nails, protective gear, uh, our roads, you know, two days ago, two and a half days ago, we were completely, hey guys, can we please mute? Uh, the roads were impassable, um, thanks to an amazing effort um, from many people, including, you know, Duncan and Jorge and uh, Sherman and, and Lucas and uh, Sean and, and you know, I'm, I'm going to miss people, but they've been out just crushing it literally hours after, you know, the storm and, and the roads are at least passable uh, for a vehicle. They're still rough. Um, when I say passable, doesn't mean they're clear. Everything's been moved to the sides and there are, there are still five to seven major areas with standing water or sewage. Many uh, septic tanks have been breached. Um, some are pulled up out of the ground. So some of these areas of standing is actual sewage uh, that's dangerous to, to be around, dangerous to walk through. Um, the guys and gals that are here are you know, wearing rubber boots and, and masks and everything to, to work in. Um, you know, and then and then just a general lack of supplies. We're we're getting bits and pieces. Uh, we're going to have an organized list tomorrow uh, to ask uh, from the many people who are offering to donate of everything we need. And it it's everything from sanitizer to you know the island's going to need four thousand trash bags. Uh, there's just a, a lot of supplies that that we need to get. Um, so anyway, with, with that, you know, I kind of want to go through, uh, well, I guess let, let's stop there a second and let's have the, the rest of the team sort of chime in, uh, they can, they can talk about you know, parts of the, the island structure that are broken. Maybe I've missed or, or go into more detail. You have Duncan. And yeah, I don't mind starting, uh, Swin. Um, so I, I'll talk about the roads since that's going to be, I'll be team lead on, on the roads. So, um, so today we started out with um, a collaborative effort with my crew um, and Rainier's crew. Um, tomorrow we have Matt Wykes, Rainier, and my crew. Um, we made a dent from all the way from, and, and before we even started, this we had paths that would make it through on each road, but now we're actually going through. So that, that way the next step, you know, getting 
the lulls down the roads, getting um, you know the materials down the road. So that way for rebuilding, we're gonna be ready to go. So today we started at Mark and Wendy's at the entrance of the state preserve and we made it to the corner of my house on Rum Road. So, and that was with a 10 man crew. So that gives you an idea of what type of, you know, removal we're looking at, but that's all chipped. Um, so tomorrow we're gonna beef it up. Matt uh, Wikes and the, the Island Club, um, they're gonna uh, give us another chipper. So I'm gonna be running uh, two teams. We're gonna hit the major artery of the island first. So from all the way from Rum Road to the airstrip and around to North Airstrip Road. That way, uh, main areas are accessible. And then we're gonna go street by street. Now, you know, we just jumped on it and we're gonna talk a little bit more about how these projects are gonna be funded, I'm sure, um, in a little bit, Swin. But um, basically, you know, we're just we're just jumping at it right now and, and um, getting things done. So that was um, really good to see. And I, I did do a post on Facebook about um, you know, some, some of the positive things out of the storm and definitely unity, um, you know, has the island as, as a whole um, out here, um, everyone's, you know, doing their part. Um, I thought today's um, meeting, uh, the last couple of meetings have been very productive. And what I would like to ask the UCCA board, um, and I'm not sure if Swin has had a chance to present this to the board, but is just to make sure that the people on the ground in this committee would have, you know, the ability to help make decisions on where the money goes. Cause we're on the ground. We know exactly what the needs are. Um, and then the other thing is, um, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna narrow down the pie list. So I'm gonna submit, you know, what I think we need to swim Matt Weiss and, you know, Shally and whoever, um, is going to go and do that too. So then that way the donors can come in and they can ship things um, to designated addresses and it will find its way out to the island. Right now we had a great um, uh, supplier run from John Mejia and crew. We had Lisa Walker that brought a U-Haul truck full of stuff. And these things are making a difference um, where we're able to tarp up people's houses temporarily or we're able to um you know um do what you know the road clearing with extra chainsaw and equipment and um you know so so far we're off to a good start given the circumstances yep do we have uh matt are you on any questions guys uh, about any of that stuff yeah duncan this is tom kluber one question for you what kind of heavy equipment do you have on the island so right now, um, you know, I have my tractor and backhoe. We're losing a little Duncan. Yeah, he has a chipper and then he has a number of chainsaws involved. By the way, they, they killed it today. I mean, just, just seconding, you know, um, um, big machinery, lulls, uh, chippers. So I think we, we pretty much have what we need. Okay, so none of the equipment got water damaged or flooded during the surge? Not that I'm aware of. We moved everything to high ground, which um, worked out well. I, as far as I know, I don't have any damage uh, that I'm aware of. Good. Hey, hey so, so real quick, let's, um, let, let's do the questions later. Um, otherwise, we're going to get bogged down in, in the middle of stuff. But let's, let's kind of keep uh, moving through it if, if we can. It'd be great. Um, Matt or uh, Jeff Irvine, are you guys on? Hello, yep. This is Jeff Irvine, Safety Harbor Club Manager. Um, we have a separate Zoom set up for 7 o'clock tomorrow, but uh, basically we have our crew coming over tomorrow and we'll be there seven days a week. I think three of the guys are going to be there 24-7. So we'll make sure that we look after that. We've got a lot of our, you know, our own equipment. Um, we certainly are going to uh, help out wherever we can. So um, we're we're on it. I was on the island a couple of days uh, since the hurricane, and I think uh, things are moving forward very well in the club. But uh, again, we want continuity between the the whole island, and we're here to help. But as far as the club's concerned, the crew's coming on tomorrow, and. Uh, We've got it going on, but we've got a, a big job ahead of us, but we can get her done. So thank you. Hey, Swin. Yeah. 
So it may be helpful to explain the teams meeting together so you know that everybody's on the same page, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, so so this this team, you know, came together in the, I guess, between, um, you know, really Saturday and, uh, shoot, what is today? Today, Monday? So Sunday at 1 p.m., we, we had our first meeting together and we uh, went through and we, we, you know, sort of created some team leads on some of the most important things. And we'll, we'll go through sort of who those team leads are and what those projects are in a little bit. Uh, but we're meeting every day uh, at 1 p.m. We, we meet and we go through uh, what we discussed the day before, what action items there were, uh, and, and then, you know, we go through new items that, that we need to get projects started. We select a, a team lead. That team lead doesn't have to be in this group. We want team leads from the community, um, and, and that'll be something we go over uh, as far as the volunteering and everything that we'll get to, but it, it's very much a collaborative meeting. We, we talk about the needs, uh, we talk about the logistics, and, and we talk about the execution, and then we move with a team lead, and that team lead is responsible for the execution of, of those items. So very much a collaborative uh, process. We're early. We've met for two days. Uh, we'll, we'll meet tomorrow at one, and, and every day at one uh, for the foreseeable future. So um yeah very, very much like we're, we're in touch with each other and we have to meet because there's no communication on the island unless you're in a house and you're lucky to have starlink uh if you're out and about on the island if, if if i'm you know at the airstrip and duncan's you know down near island club he can't call me i can't call him i can't text him he can't text me it's impossible to get any communication uh, on the island right now. Um, anyway, uh, so is is Matt on? Let me check my text. Make sure he could get in. Yeah, he he may be on his phone, so he might not be able to unmute and everything. So is uh, is Mike Phillips Zach on? Yeah, I'm on Swin. Yeah, um, appreciate you, uh, you know, putting this together. Um, I'm kind of sitting here in the dark um, in my house, but I have some power. But um, I just want to uh, emphasize that, um, you know, all of the major uh, entities and businesses on the island have been invited to uh, participate in this effort. I know not everybody is um, happy about, you know, access to the island and so forth, but, you know, we really have um, to make a distinction here between what is being done uh, for the community good. Uh, this is not the time for us to break apart and, you know, sort of try to take care of ourselves. I think we have to come together as a community uh, I appreciate what Swin has done and what all the other team leads have done. And I think it's important that we just continue um, in a community spirit here. Uh, I'm sure that Swin will talk a little bit later about, you know, homeowners, you know, being able no, to come and check out their individual properties. But I think, you know, the vast majority of people who are here on the island now are um, working for the community good. And I think we need to just keep that in mind and keep moving forward with that. And Michael, I think you bring up a good point um, that I wanted to reemphasize is the fact that, you know, the island businesses are depending on, you know, uh, they need to find a way to stay afloat, whether it's, you know, Tortuga or it's North Captiva Club or the Island Club in North Captiva now. You know, Safety Harbor needs the revenue, whether they're Gen Park or Shally's, you know, so, you know, they, those guys, if you, you know, if you need to have house checks and you need the, your pictures, it might be take, it might take a little longer than usual right now, just because of a balance of, hey, look, we got to do what's 
good for the community. And we also need to do what is good, you know, for our businesses. So there's a, there's that balancing act that's going on, but I do want to emphasize, um, you know, that, you know, we got, we have to keep the business local amongst the community of the, of the current providers that are out here. So, of course, they're going to get overwhelmed and there's going to be times where we're going to need to bring in other people. But I just think that's a very important point. Yeah. Uh, let me see. I don't know. Matt or Dustin with Island Club, either of you on? It might not have gotten back over. I thought it was on. Okay, uh, Mark Justice or Tom, I think Tom was with uh, Mike just then. Hey, Schwinn, yep. the fire chief is on the call. Can we uh, get an update from him? Sure, is he on there? Well, I don't know if it's by phone or not. I don't know any numbers. So, yeah, so, so real quick, um, I've got a presentation. I want to keep running through it. Uh, I, I, I'm aware of, of fire district uh, things. I, I don't want this to delve into a fire district uh, call. That's not what this one is about. So, uh, so to to continue on and and to address you know a couple of comments you know in, in the chat. Uh, there there is no. There, there is no specific like lead on this whole thing. This is a collaborative effort. So when we talk about team leads, we're talking about taking specific projects and, and creating team leads for them. So everyone within this group is a team lead and is collaborative in the entire process of, of deciding what we should be doing. So uh, for those of you that uh, disagree with messaging that I've put out, that messaging is, is a collaborative effort and everything. So uh, anyway, uh, moving on. So uh, projects that we have started and, and the team leads are uh, transportation. Uh, we, we have a major issue with marine transportation right now as we don't have any access to Pine Island. Uh, as you can imagine, everyone around is scrambling uh, for access to, to boat ramps, to docks that, that are ruined uh, and everything. And so things have moved outward to Burt Store Marina, uh, to uh, Tarpon Point Marina, to Cape Harbor, uh, way out to Horton Park uh, and uh, Cape Coral shut down Horton Park today and is not allowing people to drop boats there anymore. So some of the, our captains like Chris Darley, uh, Joe Derville and others who were dropping in there on their rant no longer can. So uh, I was able to get to Safe Harbor Marinas who owns Pineland, they own uh, Burnt Store, uh, they own um, Cape Harbor, and they're invested in our island. And they are giving us uh, touch and go space at Burnt Store and at uh, Cape Harbor Marina. We're also working with Tarpon Point to be able to have people land there. So our captains will be able to go back and forth, uh, bringing uh, people back and forth, bringing supplies back and forth until hopefully uh, the 8th or 9th, if they're able to open up the Matt Lachey Bridge and, and then everyone can start hopefully using the commercial marina again. Uh, and so we've made uh, Kevin Testa with the Island Club the transportation lead. He will be coordinating with captains, uh, letting them know that these marinas are open to them uh, for touch and go access. We're, we're still trying to get back with uh, Safe Harbor to try to get Island Club uh, access to dock their ferry uh, at Burnt Store in the evenings 
so that the logistics of, of bringing people over are easier than, than them having to come back and, and store it uh, on island and, and go back. Uh, with that, uh, we, we made Mark Justice the fuel lead. He's mainly in charge of diesel. The diesel is to run uh, all the heavy equipment on the island. And from the team's calculations, we need uh, upwards of 600 gallons of diesel on the island every week. Uh, he's bringing a first run of 200 gallons tomorrow. And uh, the team's going to fill all you know, Duncan's you know, team as the roads lead will fill all the chippers. They'll fill all the heavy equipment. And uh, Mark will, will make sure that that diesel is flowing to the island um, as needed. Uh, we, before we knew that, that uh, Mike Verona and Danny might be able to get the barges back up and running and actually have a spot perhaps uh, within the week uh, on Pine Island, we, we've had a, uh, several people reach out to us who have barges, who are willing to bring supplies uh, and potentially equipment over. And so Jeff Irvine uh, is sort of the barge lead until uh, Verona and Davenport are fully operational. And it's very possible that we will need additional barge support outside of them uh, for, for a little while. I mean, we're, we're going to have a lot of uh, debris and trash to remove from the island and uh, at the same time having a lot of supplies coming. So um, as we know that, Jeff will be uh, leading that charge. Uh, we are trying to get all the uh, businesses, all the contractors on the island uh, FEMA certified while also trying to reach out to FEMA for financial support for a lot of these operations. And uh, so Matt Wikes is the FEMA lead. And so he's gonna be working on that whole process, uh, helping you know, give uh, all the other vendors the information on uh, how to get set up with FEMA and then uh, trying to chase you know, the program to, to get some of the money uh, flowing for these things. So I do wanna underscore it is, the highest priority for all of us that these island uh, businesses, vendors, workers get, get paid and get compensated for everything they've been doing and, and then more, right? They've been incredible. Like they're, they're working the longest days, uh, the dirtiest jobs, in really bad conditions with very little support and, and supply chain. So as, as we get into it in a little bit and we talk about like donation systems and, and, and where other monies can come from, the priority is to pay for the things uh, needed to fix the island while utilizing our home team businesses and workers. High, high, high priority. So uh, while Matt will work on the FEMA stuff and we'll be trying to get that money, we, we won't be able to count on it. So we're going to need, you know, other avenues to fundraise. Uh, we already talked about Duncan uh, being the roads lead and um, AJ Lavalley will, will sort of co-lead that with him um, as AJ is sort of integral with the roads from the fire district standpoint. Uh, we, we have a clothing lead. Nicole Rossi will be our clothing lead. Uh, when I talked to, you know, our captains and, and different workers the other day, I was like, you know, what do you need? And they were like, we need clothes. Uh, they, they don't have homes or power to wash their clothes. So they, they need clothes. So we have some short-term solutions with that from uh, some on-island donations. Island Club has a lot of dry fit uh, shirts and different things they've donated. The Bolmies had stuff, we'll, we'll look for other things, but uh, clothes will be in our supplies request um, that, that'll push out tomorrow. Uh, Nicole is also gonna be our housing lead. We're, we're trying to determine uh, all the houses that have whole home generators if those houses are habitable, 
if, uh, if the generator's working, and if they are, if the homeowner is amenable to potentially housing uh, workers uh, working on the island, um, whether it's you know the captains running or, or other workers who uh, could get a lot more done and whose lives could be easier if they were living here temporarily, um, pushing through this recovery effort. Um, I sent out a, uh, a form today looking for people to sign up. So if you're interested in that, in that you haven't seen the link to that form, you can reach out to, to me or any, anyone on this team and we'll send you that link so you can let us know, you know if your house is um, generator run and if it's available uh, for, to house people. Um, then uh, look, we have a ton of people that, that want to volunteer and we're, we're gonna need that help, whether it's additional uh, team leads, whether it's, it's help on these different projects, whether it's you know, transportation or housing or things like that. Um, we'll probably push out that form tomorrow. So you know, if you wanna volunteer, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, let us know what you wanna do, like what's your background? What, what, what are you best at? Are, are you a logistics professional? Do you just wanna do uh, manual labor? Are, are you great at just pounding the phone? Um, you know, we're, we're, we're gonna take that help and, and we need it. Um, and so Bill Fry has been tapped as the volunteers lead. He will uh, basically take in all those submissions from the form, he'll reach out to people, if, if there's already a project and a, and a team lead, he'll put them with it or he'll put it in a bucket when, when we're ready to, to have, you know, a lot of people on the island volunteering for, for different uh, things. Um, so th those are the leads as of today. We, we're going to meet again tomorrow at one. We will probably tap out two or three more projects and leads. Some of those will be um, someone working to hammer LCEC and, and get to them uh, to, to encourage work to start on our island in preparation for when they get Captiva and Sanibel up so that they're not getting them up and then waiting to get to us. Um, it, it, many, probably half of the power boxes, the, the green boxes and everything around the island are pulled completely up and out. So. I don't think anyone knows uh, how damaged uh, the power might be on the island because we won't know until they can plug it into a grid and see or get crews over here who can you know, visually inspect it and, and just know it needs to be replaced. But uh, we suspect that there, there's gonna be a lot of LCEC work um, coming. Uh, so next, just want to talk about safety and security. We uh, will probably select this lead tomorrow. We, we didn't uh, actually select a lead today on it, but um, you know, I know people are going to be concerned about uh, the safety of the island, uh, the potential of looters, um, just general house checks and stuff like that. So we're, we're going to uh, order wristbands. Uh, just like, you know, good old festival concert wristbands. And we're, we're going to request that everyone who's on the island, who should be on the island, you're, you're a property owner, you're, you're a worker, that you check in and you wear the wristband. It's not so much to keep up on all of you. You're, these are your properties. You, you can be here and everything. It's for us to, as a community, identify who doesn't have a wristband and should they be here. Um, along with that, I know the, the fire district has put in an order for increased sheriff presence. That may take a little time to get as the sheriff's office is very uh, thin right now on their personnel, but the request is to have two full-time deputies 24, I believe 24 seven, we'll get clarification on that tomorrow on the island. So they're out doing patrols. If there is an issue and someone calls 911, it's not a, a 30 minute to 75 minute uh, wait to get them here. They'll, they'll 
actually be on island. Um, and uh, and then and then we we have discussed some other deterrents to to sort of put in place. You know, maybe visual deterrents um, to keep people from landing and and thinking that no one's here, or whatever. Um, tomorrow, uh, we will publish uh, a list of available vendors and workers who uh, are here, who are operational. Um, it, it won't be an exhaustive list. If you see the list and you know a vendor or a worker who you think should be on the list, please reach out and let us know. It's not meant to exclude everyone. We just all don't know everyone and we haven't been in contact with everyone. So we don't know if some of the vendors or contractors are available and here, but um, you know the, the goal there is to make sure you uh, have that available list and you have their current uh, contact information to be able to get to them. Because if you were calling Island Club, the main phone number, well, there's no power. Their phone system doesn't work. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll publish that, whether it's a current email, a text only system or phone number for you to call and, and you can choose who you want to work with, but you know they'll be able to check on your homes empty refrigerators and freezers. We've got a process in place uh, to get rid of all that stuff uh, safely. Um, they'll be able to tarp roofs, board up windows, uh, start work on mold remediation, things like that. Obviously you can bring in anyone you want, uh, but this will just be a list to uh, give you a list of people who we know are around, know are able to get to the island and are, are ready to work. Um, let's see what else with that. So uh, real quick on the on the tarping of roofs and the and boarding of windows, it's our goal to supply uh, the, the island with enough tarps for all the homes that need to be tarped and enough uh, the, the accessory stuff like uh, furring uh, boards and galvanized nails. So when you're contracting with one of these vendors uh, for that type stuff, we expect that uh, community-wise, like this effort, that we're going to supply them with the supplies. They're, they're not going to have to individually go trying to find, you know, their, their supplies to tarp your roof or board your window. Um, so that's, you know, that, that's, you know, kind of the, the list, the working list that we're working on. You know, I want to address, you know, what, what I know some people are unhappy with my uh, messaging, but you know, look, everything that we're doing here is being done to fix essential infrastructure on the island so it's safe for everyone to come um, and that there's actual capacity for the masses to come. Right now, it's still incredibly difficult uh, for anyone to find a ride over. I mean, in our meeting today, uh, vendor to vendor, they're, they're trying to work out, hey, can you possibly get, um, you know, my four employees over every day? Because they, they want to work. I have work for them, but I can't get them over here. So like, we can't even get uh, the basic workers over, much less a, a, a bunch of homeowners, a bunch of property owners. And I get it. I know everyone wants to come. Um, so, you know, I want to make sure it's clear that all these groups, all these people have come together as a team. This is not, this is not UCCA leading it alone and, and some sort of directive. It's not SWIN leading it, leading it alone and some personal agenda or, you know, objective. This is a collaborative effort, and it's combined um, with all the or, you know major organizations and businesses on the island. If you think someone else should be added to this group in a leadership role, I think everyone that's part of this is open to that. We there's no exclusion here. Um, it just has to be manageable. So you know, look, I know one of the big beefs 
is that I have said, do not come, right? It, it's not safe to come yet. It might be safe in two days, right? It might be safe in two days. Uh, there's not enough capacity for people to come. That might change in the, in the next two to five days. So, you know, look, we're not a municipality. UCCA is a uh, volunteer civic association that some people on the island support. Uh, you, you know, all these other businesses are, are volunteering here to, to give their support and their advice and, and work. Uh, but we can't tell you what to do. We can only give suggestions for what we collectively think is the right thing to do. And it's America. These are your properties. We can't keep you away. And we're not going, and no one's going to stand at the docks and tell you, go away and get away. We're going to tell you, we don't think it's a great idea to come just yet. But that doesn't mean that we're telling you it's going to be two weeks from now or two months from now. It's possibly two days from now or five days from now. Um, so with that, in our meeting today, uh, Boats and Fun is, is going to be up and running by tomorrow. They, they've, they've got their boats operational. Uh, they've got a, a, a touch point at Burnt Store Marina. They are built for passenger. Uh, they, they can't do many supplies on their boats. So if you want to come, I guess come, but, you know, please, uh, as, as we try to support our local businesses and our local workers, call Boats and Fun and have them bring you over. I think it is the opinion of the collective group that if you come, it's preferred that you do a day trip. You, you come in, go see your house, do, do what you need to do and go. It's, it's not comfortable to be here uh, much more than that. And, and unless you have a house with a generator and you, you can hold up there and it's a different experience. There are things that are unsafe. It's not just the sewage on the road, it's nails, um, it's everything. If you don't have a generator, you, uh, your, your cart's not gonna last long if your cart's even working. Uh, from what we can see from people we're talking to, it's sort of a coin flip if you have a working cart or not. If, if water got into it, it's probably not working. If it is working and you don't have a generator, it's gonna be out you know, in a day or two and probably inappropriate for you to go charge on someone else's generator with it, without them knowing. Um, so anyway, I think the opinion is if massive amounts of people come right now, that's going to strangle a very fragile ecosystem. Um, and, and I'll just kind of leave it that nobody on this team is self-serving themselves. We're, we're, not, we're not here working on our homes and, and looking after ourselves. Every day, everyone here is out in the field doing hard manual labor, logistics, uh, tons of phone calls, tr trying to, to pull services together, trying to get the county to pay attention to us and all like that. So I guess that's, that's really the, the presentation. Uh, again, before we go into Q&A, if, if anyone on you know, the leadership team uh, would like to chime in and, and weigh in on anything, um, also, it, it invited uh, Mark Moeller because you know he's a pretty trusted voice on the island to, to be able to chime in and stuff. So uh, leadership team first, if they want to say anything, and, and then we'll go to Q&A. So it, it looks like you covered you know um, the vast majority of our uh, conversation earlier today. Um, a, two th a couple uh, critical things that I um, would uh, recommend the current board on the UCCA and, you know, just full disclosure, I am not a board member of the UCCA. I'm on the fire board, not the upper capacity of a civic association. But um, I would, you know, ask that the board, and there's been talks of this, I'd ask the board um, to move the Island Access Fund 
into the hurricane relief um, efforts. So I think that's a hundred plus thousand dollar fund. Um, so the board members that are on the call, um, I think that is critical. Um, and then two, um, you know, the UCCA, um, uh, you know, I know you guys are working on it. Yeah. Hey, Duncan, can I interrupt you one quick sec? Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, just to be clear, uh, and UCCA uh, members. Go ahead, Swin. Uh, can Can y'all hear me? Can I interrupt you one quick? Sure. Okay. So uh, Saturday, the UCCA board met and uh, agreed, voted and agreed to repurpose the island access fund that is approximately, I think it's $103,000 and change uh, to a Hurricane Ian disaster fund. So those funds can be spent on these efforts. So the, vote, the board has already voted for that. The board feels that that vote belongs to the members and not the board. So all UCCA members tomorrow morning will get an email from the election buddy for you to vote yes to release those funds for uh, Hurricane Ian uh, recovery relief or no. I, I think it will overwhelmingly pass yes. So we're hopeful in, in the coming days that we'll have that money uh, to spend. Um, additionally, and this is so I just kind of answer, I, I know where you're going with, with some of this question, um, Duncan, so I do it. Additionally, you at UCCA will be raising additional funds. We're, we're pushing the Island Cookbook that was put together as, as a fundraising piece, and we will have additional parts to that and direct donations available uh, for the community at large, for us to send out to, to past guests. You know, we, we will ask for those who rent to perhaps send that those links out to their past guests if they want to you know, either donate or, or, or get a cookbook. Um, and then, you know, the general public will go to, to other pages. When those funds come in, uh, there'll be additional funds to spend on hurricane relief that, that's already been voted by the board to specifically any of these donations are for this fund. And uh, what the leadership team uh, uh, hey, of this Swin? Hey, Swin, this is, this is Matt White. Sorry, I just was able uh, to get on the call. Don't mean to interrupt, no, but just want to let you know. I'm no, no, no worries, Matt. I'm going to finish up a second, then we'll, we'll let you, uh, we'll let Duncan then finish, and, and then we'll let you kind of chime in on stuff, okay? Okay. Uh, so uh, what, what the, the leadership team of, of this recovery effort has requested, uh, and I'll be calling a UCCA board meeting tomorrow night to, to hopefully, you know, get it done is, as additional donation monies come in, that we we take basically chunks of those that donation money. Let's let's just say I'm just going to throw out numbers. Let's just say that we you know we had fifty thousand dollars come in. Uh, the the ask from the leadership team is that UCCA would say take thirty thousand dollars of that, allocate it to this team to spend how this team feels it needs to be spent. And then as that is accounted for, UCCA would, would continue to keep funding the initiative um, because it, it's, it's a fluid situation daily. Like we talked about uh, diesel fuel. Well, you know, we, we've got to be able to say, okay, we need diesel fuel. How are we getting it? We're getting it. Okay. Yes. We pay for it, uh, order it. Right. We don't have uh, time to go back through a bunch of red tape to you know, seek approvals that can take hours or even days to get. So um, know that there'll be a, a, a very high level of transparency on the money spent. It'll be this wide uh, team uh, that is overseeing the, um, the effort that will determine how it's gonna, gonna be spent. And it's very important to this team and I want to underscore it again for anyone who, who has not heard it. Getting our island businesses and these individual and their employees and, and the individual, you know, contractors, captains and all who are working on them by themselves paid and paid well for their efforts that they've already done, like heroic efforts that they've already done and that they're going to continue to do 
for many, many months is the utmost priority for us. And if we, if we can get some of that done with FEMA money, great. Otherwise, we will continue to fundraise, fundraise, fundraise to do it. Um, and I'll just give you an example. And, and frankly, why I think everyone on this call and everyone who owns on the island should contribute to you know, a fundraiser like that. Uh, beyond the, the, the clearing of the roads that ha has happened and everything going to the side, now the, the road team is gonna have to go down each and every, every road, cut up and chip up every single road. And, and you know it's gonna just go into the lots that it's in front of it. It, it came off your lot, it's in the roadway, it's going back in, in your lot as um, chips. That's a lot of work. They cannot do that for free. The amazing thing about this team that, that has already come together and all the workers, no one is, has said, how, you know, pay me, uh, it's going to cost you this. They're just working. So highest of priority to take care of our business and businesses and our, and our workers. Sorry, hopefully that helped, Duncan. Yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, I, you know, when the donation tab um, on the website um, does um, open up, I, you know, I do encourage, um, I feel confident with our uh, committee, uh, our informal committee that was formed, um, that we can make the correct decisions on the ground. So, um, you know, between we have a really strong team on the ground here. So um, just you have to entrust us to make these decisions. And of course, we'll be transparent um, along the way as to what we're gonna be spending it on. Um, but um, when the donation tab is available, I will encourage everyone to, to donate. Um, Matt Wikes, um, I'm gonna let you, uh, you know, um, you, I'm gonna defer you. No, th thanks, Duncan. Um, I'm not sure what has been said to this point yet. I, I've had a, a hard time connecting, but um, all, all I know is that it's a community that's as resilient as, as ours to make this happen. And to see what we've done in the, the past four to five days uh, and come together uh, from, from all walks of all businesses has been extremely encouraging. Um, working with, you know, the, the National Guard and, and the Sheriff's Department and the Fire Department and with Duncan and Sean and Allie and, and, um, and Swin has, has, been, has been really awesome. We, we do need uh, the support from you guys. I think one of the big things that we're, we're getting a little bit of heat on that we've kind of talked about a little bit is, is the safety of people coming to the island. Um, we don't, we don't want people not to come, but we just want you guys to be aware of what, what is out there uh, and that it's literally feces in the street. And I don't know how, how that's been touched on yet, but um, I'll, I'll wait for some feedback uh, and I'll just touch on that briefly. As far as the businesses go, um, I, I, I think that over an overarching and a, a, a massive resounding voice of we need your support to support the families that work on the island, work for the island. Um, there's a lot of people that are counting on us, not just the homes to get rebuilt and to, to, to get put back together, but for the families of those that work out there that really are um, needing uh, uh, the assistance. So um, we have the capacity to do a lot of different stuff. Uh, we're teaming up with the chipper, we're teaming up with, um, you know, transportation, um, you know, like, Tomorrow, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing some uh, uh, Sean and Allie's workers out on our, on our boats, and we're, we're just going to keep working together. Um, we've got a couple different licenses for roofing and tarping crews that, that we can bring out and start boarding up. We've already done some boarding up. I think we've been in 25 homes. Um, and like, yeah, I'm probably repeating some of the stuff that you guys have already talked about because you've been on this call for an hour. And, and uh, like I said, I had a hard time getting a connection. So um, is there anything specifically that, that – uh, Duncan or Swim that you want me to kind of touch on that we've that we've talked about that that's kind of in, in my side. Do you want me to talk about the FEMA stuff? 
Yeah, I think I think there's already some questions in the in the chat, you know, FEMA, like, you know, it, how do we get FEMA funds? Will FEMA be paying? Can we get FEMA to pay for, you know, some of this? You know, Matt, maybe you explain, like, you guys are already uh, a, a registered certified FEMA contractor. I know uh, we're trying to get other businesses. How's, you know, maybe we talk about how that works um, so, so the community can understand it. Yeah, so... Um, we registered with, with FEMA. Uh, there's there's a there's an, a link on there. Any any business can register to work with FEMA. Um, you can enlist the, the licenses that you have. And, and um, uh, Arc Island Contracting, you know, we've got several of the the higher level construction licenses, so we're able to do some of the the roofing, the HVAC, the the plumbing, electric, so on and so forth um, through through FEMA. Right now, you know, I've I've told the the committee that. The guys that we're bringing out and, and what we're doing, um, I'm paying for privately, you know, my labor on my side out, out of out of uh, out of my pocket, and in in hopes that FEMA will come through and the government will do the right thing. Um, but from a uh, you know, an side, I think that I and we owe it to the island to, to keep our our people uh, employed and to do what we can to serve the community. And I think that that. Most everybody, actually, I know that everybody is doing basically the same thing. They're paying their guys. They want them to work, and we're going to work together to work through this stuff. The top, they're on the phone about uh, you know kind of helping them do the link and, and so on and so forth. And it's just presenting team effort and no egos, no competitiveness. Like we just want to serve to serve and to do the right thing for the right reason and. It's a freaking disaster out there, and it's in a feeling for show, but it's really amazing to watch people come together for the better, uh, the betterment of the community, and it's that keeps me waking up with uh, with hope in my heart and, and a smile on my face, and, and eager to go to work and spend time away from my family, away from my my home that, that is damaged you know, on the mainland, and I will put in the work of that, and and. Uh, and, and we're, we're going to get through this and anything that I can do, that we can do, that the resources that I have on the mainland or the island, we're all in. We're all in this together for the community. Okay. Thanks, Matt. So uh, any of the other leadership team want to chime in before we start uh, questions? Hey, Swin, can I, uh, can I voice uh, a little oh, something yeah. here on regarding the roads? Sure. Yeah, I just I wanted to point out um, I did get stuck up north uh, at this point. I, I don't know if everybody's aware. I mean, RSW or Myers Airport is still closed. Um, they were predicting Friday as an opening. Um, they've now moved it up to some limited airfare uh, or limited uh, access on Wednesday. And, and I do have a flight back in on on Friday. I, I don't know how many of you know this, but I, I do take responsibility for the structural side of the roads. Um, I can't thank the UCCA enough um, in, in collaboration with the fire department that brought the Kubota tractor out here, not with the idea that would solve um, hurricane problems, but it will solve hurricane problems. And I can tell you, um, once I get out there uh, in coordination with Mark Justice and, and his crew and his equipment, uh, we have a, a Kubota tractor with a grader. We have a, uh, it, it has the ability for rollers. We'll have the structural side of the roads um, put back together, uh, my best guess, within two weeks. Uh, you have to get rid of the water first. Uh, forget whether it's sewage or not. Water is, is the kiss of death on, on, an, on any uh, road structure. But I think we can put that side of it back together thanks to the equipment and the foresight uh, to have this kind of stuff um, on site. It also, by the way, is a, is a budgetary element from the fire department. I think we're the only fire department in the, in the country that maintains its own roads. And, and, I, and I'm very proud of that. I think, I think that's going to go a long way to helping this community get back on its feet with that. So um, the only other comment that I would make, I, there seems to be an awful lot of undertow about this issue about coming back to the island. Um, I came out with, uh, in Irma and lived off the grid. If any of you have lived without electricity, which usually means without water, it is a completely whole different world. I would strongly encourage you uh, not to experiment with this until you're absolutely ready what you're getting into. 
I, I agree that uh, I, I don't mind parachuting into this and, 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 and playing my part because I have a kind of a special role on the, on the infrastructure side. But I really do think um, experimenting off the grid is a ton of work, literally at the survival level. And I, I hats off to you for, for pointing that out. Um, I'll be quiet with that. Uh, if we don't have anyone else uh, from the leadership team, we'll, we'll start taking questions. So uh, I'm going to take the hand raises first, and, th and then I'm going to do my best to grab questions in the chat. Um, leadership team, if you'll please be ready to chime in on, on things that you know might be in, in your... Can we get a, uh, your strip comment? Hey, Swin, Brian Thomas, can we give an air strip hey. update? Oh, you want to, yeah, yeah, Brian, you want to give an airstrip up, update? That'd, that'd be great. First of all, AJ flying to Tampa. I'll take you down. Okay. And uh, just, just for an update on the airstrip, the manager's been working to try to come up with a plan to allow any humanitarian relief to come in. Uh, we're just going to operate, first of all, priority wise, humanitarian relief, members, owners. And everything has to go through the management, which is actually me, to uh, get a, get uh, approval to land at the airstrip. We're trying to to maintain the airstrip. We're, we're we've had to repair some damage from the Chinooks, Chinooks that came in from the Air National Guard to keep the runway open. The runway has been shortened by about 400 feet, so we're limited on the capabilities of people coming in and coming out uh, according to the size of the aircraft. I've been flying in daily for the past three days uh, in a smaller airplane. I'm going to try on Wednesday in my larger airplane. The problem is is not so much the uh, arrival as it is the takeoff. Uh, and it's done in the afternoon with the west winds. It usually isn't a problem. Awesome. Okay. So. Uh, let everyone stay on mute. I'll, I'll, I'll call out who, who has their hands up and then we'll sort of alternate back and through, uh, with questions in the chat and we'll answer them. Uh, Rick Douglas. Hi, uh, yes, thank you. First of all, I want to just thank everybody um, for doing everything that you've done to this point. We were out, we were here for Charlie 561 R Rum Road and it was a month before we could even talk to anybody. So it's just unbelievable how quickly you've organized and moved things forward. My biggest question would be, how can I, as a homeowner on the island, hire someone that's there to go inspect my house? Um, I've had a few reports, but I, I don't have any pictures. I can't get there. I would love for somebody else to do that so that I don't have to go and be you know, in the way, um, at least until I can get out there safely. So that would be my biggest question. Yeah, so uh, actually, how do you I know you asked me already, but um, most people, they're not uh, Tortuga managed, then Nicole Rossi would be the go-to person. I've committed to the Douglas family, but N Nicole Rossi would be our go-to person for those who do not have independent, um, don't have specific property managers, um, so you can defer to Nicole. Yeah. So, so I would I would I would also oh, share hey, with, hey, hey. with uh, Yep, go ahead. Is that Matt? I, 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 yeah, I would share that um, having the, the restoration experience uh, and, and gone through the insurance side of uh, the claim process several times um, with with my other business partners, Dan Nelson and Jesse Chase. Um, we have kind of a, a set protocol of what we're doing for the homeowners. Um, and again, this isn't a, a plug for you to call me, but, but we do have capacity to take on uh, at least that documentation phase and, and helping with uh, getting the initial photos. What, we, what we've been doing with some of the homes that we're, that we're going into is taking photos from all angles of the exterior and then clearing any kind of access way, uh, you know, tree branches and whatnot uh, to the doors and entryways to the homes. And then... Um, going inside and then taking photos of every corner of every room uh, and then putting it up into a software that we have that will keep track of everything so that if you do decide 
to file your claim, you'll have all of this data and all this information that you can upload. And if you need assistance with it or whatever, then, then we can help you with that. Or if you just want the information, you can have the information and, and choose to do with it what you what you see fit. Um, so, and then uh, the way that you would contact us would be homeowners at northcaptiva.com, and then we can get that distributed into the you know whatever channels uh, you, you decide to choose. But that that's just you know from, from our side. Yep. So, so real, real quick, Rick. Um, Hello. Can I hear this, Tom Jenkins? Can I? Hey, Tom, Rick hang in there. Tom, okay. hang in there. One quick sec. One quick sec. Uh, okay. Hey, Rick. So, just to back up a sec, and and I I mentioned this a little earlier. Tomorrow, we will publish info. We'll we'll do an email through UCCA. We'll do posts on the homeowners group, listing out all available. Uh, vendors and businesses, whether it's Island Club, Tortuga, Nicole, Jen Parker, um, many others that uh, that we know and we have verified are, are are able to get to the island or on the island full time and can do that type of work from checking homes, emptying refrigerators and freezers, tarping roofs, you know, boarding windows and all like that. So we'll we'll send a list. And again, to everyone, when you see that list, that is not a list that, that we're going, this is only who you can use. You can use whoever you want. And if there's someone important on the island that we've missed that you know is working, please let us know. We'll update that list. We want to include all island businesses, where whether it's a larger business or whether it's an individual in that list. So we have everyone that can be working, working. Quinn, can I make a Hey, hey, Rick. Yes. This is Tom Jenkins, your neighbor. Hey, Tom. Hey, just want to let you know your house looks good. You got a little bit of a uh, your roof came up a little bit on the on the smaller house, the original house. I, I'm sorry, to, I've been so busy and the phone service is so bad out here that uh, I get cut off on most of the calls I'm on. But uh, your house looks good. Now uh, I can Thank I can you. run over tomorrow and get a closer look at it, and I can get back with you if that's if that's good for you too. Love it, appreciate it. Thank you. Cool. I'm gonna answer a quick question from the from the chat, uh, and then we'll go to the next hand. Uh, someone asked Wait. if anyone uh, has seen or heard from Jenny Parker. Uh, yes, she was in our meeting today. Um, she's around. She might be on this call. She was invited to this call, so um, she's around and she's working. Uh, so next is is Laura Murphy. I don't. Hmm. Oh, I'm uh, Jeff. Do you know how to raise the hand? Sorry. No, I'm sorry. I, I uh, just was. I thought that you'd heard from me before. I just want to let uh, you know that in uh, the Safety Harbor members know we've got a systematic plan in place starting tomorrow, looking after houses. So. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Laura Murphy. Hey, hey, Swin. It, it's Pat and Laura Murphy. Um, there's been a lot of conversation in the early part of this meeting about getting money moving. And I understand that we're, we're probably going to get money out of our fund here into the hands of those that have been doing the work. Yeah. I, I am very concerned about how we can get money to people who are doing this work. And I don't think $100,000 is going to get us there. So do we have any process from which we could do, for lack of a better word, I'm going to say an assessment or some process where you know, for the good of our community, all the homeowners are getting a bill of some sort or a formal contribution matter that we can get money to the people that are doing the work for us today and for the months to come. I'm sure we have a few attorneys um, that are present. Do we have an ability to create a 501c3 organization, which would allow us to set this up as a charity that we could give donations into the charity and have them distributed from there? Yeah. Thanks, Swin. Yeah, so right now we we uh, right now the structure, just because we don't want to take too much time to launch, is is to do the fundraise through UCCA because organizations there, the bank accounts are there, the process. The downside to that is that we're not a five hundred one c three, right? So you don't uh, you don't necessarily get you know as a donor you don't get that tax write off that you do with a five hundred one c three. Um, they're, they're, we, we just don't want to wait. So the, the problem with the 501c3 
is you're not allowed to collect money until you're certified by the IRS. That is taking, because I did it last year with one, that is taking six months. So if we go to create a new 501c3, then we're, we're waiting six months because you legally cannot say we're a 501c3, donate to us and take that money before you're certified. So it, it's just going to prolong it. Um, our, our view is that, that people will want money moving here. Um, don't necessarily see this as, you know, any one person, although I'm sure our island community would appreciate doing like some large, uh, you know, upper five figure or six figure donation. The, these will probably be in increments of hundreds of dollars to, to some thousands of dollars. And that that, that donation write off is not crazy important. I mean, you, you can all, you know, chime in and say if you think that's important, but the structure is already there to, to go collect. So it's not just about the $103,000. UCCA is, is launching like probably in the next 24 hours, a, a donation cycle. There'll be two different things. One is about buying the Island cookbook, and then you'll be encouraged to also donate in that stream additionals and then different separate, you know, donation. So, look, we, we can definitely, you know, talk about if, if people are, are, you know, wicked against that, but that's the, the quickest thing to do. And every day that we aren't uh, out there soliciting for donations, the 500 other organizations that, that need it for other areas are, and, and then all the ones that are scamming people. So uh, I'm open to, to any feedback on that. Yeah. Okay. Swin, th this is Pat still. Um, yeah. I, I think we need to think bigger. Okay. We can't think about cookbooks and t-shirts. And I mean, those are nickels and dimes. We got to find a way to raise real money quickly. So there's got to be somebody on our committee that has some experience with that. I'm just encouraging that I think there's enough homeowners on here that would want to raise their hand and help out, but we need to raise money quickly. And I'm not talking about $50,000, $100,000. We, we need to raise a half a million bucks and we got to do it quickly. Yeah, I, I, think, I think this team would accept any, and this is part of the volunteer thing, anyone who has major experience in, you know, large scale, you know, donation, uh, completely open to it, want, want to do it. Swin, can I can I chime in on this too, Pat? Uh, I want to thank you. You, Pat, was one of the great uh, contributors to the uh, Kingfisher project on the road too, and so he speaks from the heart and his wallet. And I and I think the idea is a great one. I do want to chime in from an experience standpoint to point out that um, FEMA will cover an awful lot of um, some of expenses in regards to chipping, clearing roads, etc. And the chief. Um, has has already made contact uh, to to get FEMA on board uh, to pay some of our contractors for things like that. So we may find out. I I, I like the spirit. I don't want to discourage uh, raising a half a million dollars. I think you're going to find out that there's a lot of different resources that can be pulled in. Um, some of them are government. Uh, by the way, the fire department has a budget for roads and clearing. Um, and by the way. Um, in some ways, the uh, I think FEMA is going to end up paying for our clearing that the fire department would otherwise pay for. So I think we're going to find out financially that if we if we work together, um, a combination of all those things that I just described, I think this is not quite as insurmountable as it is. But let's go get it, guys. Let's go. Let's go do it together. Yeah. There's my thought. Yeah. Uh, agreed. So look. Um, Anyway, I know there's a, a lot of uh, a lot of stuff in the chat. Anyone interested in talking about higher level fundraising, please reach out to me or, or anyone on, on this team, uh, Duncan, Matt, whatever. Get, get your name to us, and I, I think you know sky's the limit. We're we're open to it. There's not one uh, path. Um, and, and I, and I 100% uh, agree. It's, it's gotta be a bigger look than a smaller look. So all good. Uh, next is uh, Rodell. It says Rodell mini pad. 
It's Rodell Riley. I want to know uh, when I was reading Facebook last night, they're looking for a place to drop off supplies. There is a problem. The fire department's turning people away. Okay, so that 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 has been resolved. Okay, uh, that's and, what and, I, my and, major and, concern and, was. And we are using the fire uh, department as uh, the the central supply depot. However, uh, it's we're already outgrowing it. So uh, our team talked today uh, about uh, finding another area or two on the island. Look, uh, respectfully to everyone, uh, we have to secure these supplies, whether it's tarps or a generator or a water pump or you know uh, bottles of water because uh, they, they will start to disappear. People will just take them. So uh, it is important to us to secure them. The, the fire district, that it was just a miscommunication, someone who didn't know what was going on. Um, again, very hard to communicate on the island. You, you, you can't just be somewhere and text someone and, and know that they got that message. So, but res resolved. Um, all right, so let me go back to the chat. Let me see if I, I know someone had asked, who do you call for security? Uh, Today it's it's nine one one. You 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 call dispatch. You 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 call the emergency line, and uh, if you think that uh, there's someone who's a suspected looter, you you think there's something suspicious going on, you call nine one one. You tell them you're on North Captiva, and the sheriff's department will come. Uh, again, you know, referencing back to earlier, the uh, the fire district has done a, an official request to get two um, sheriff's deputies on the island. Again, I, I need to confirm if Duncan and, and Matt and everyone help remind this tomorrow, but I believe that is meant to be 24 seven. They, they'll have shifts and we'll have two here all the time. There's no ETA on when that happens. It's doubtful it's, it's tomorrow. The, the sheriff's department and all the other emergency services around are, are just finishing what they consider search and rescue. I know uh, parts of that are still happening. If you, know, if you look at um, some of the data out there, airspace is still closed over Pine Island and Mount Lachey. They're, they're still um, you know, searching for people uh, over there. But um, as that eases up, we should get access to that. So that, that's the goal there. Uh, so next, uh, Claire. Hey there. So a uh, quick question. Uh, someone noted that we have limited time, I think 30 days to claim from FEMA any major um, garbage disposal off the island. So if each of us as homeowners were to get the, the bag thingos, the dumpy bags, if we have, you know, specific dump stuff, not foliage that needs yeah, so to be those bags, yeah, so we we that uh, that's something that we'll cover in more detail on our meeting tomorrow. So um, we we know that there's going to be some limited capacity uh, with you know our, our barges here, right? As they they come up back online, so we we are in contact with uh, outside bargers, barging captains, and barging companies, and and you know we're already talking about the thing is is locally in retail bull bags are very scarce you know you can't go to one place and say i want a hundred of them um, we're trying to get to mike verona who has said that he has a direct relationship with the company to go you know we, hey can you get 400 bull bags right so we need them on the island right away um, we have a lot of baxters there's nothing wrong with bagsters other than they don't hold near the capacity. They're like a three yard versus an eight yard container. So you're, you're caught, you know, it still takes a, a lot of floor space and it's floor space on the barge that they care about. Right. And so it's more expensive to take that, that little three yard bagster than an eight yard bull bag. So, uh, but we won't be limited to that. We'll be asking for, you know, full on dumpsters, right? Can we, can we bring in dumpsters and put, put them at the end of streets and everything? So we've got a, uh, that's some of sort of a convergence between some different team leads and like Matt working with FEMA. Uh, I, I would love to hear, you know, Duncan or Matt or anyone else's per perspective on 
I, I think it's going to be challenging to get that many bull bags or dumpsters over here, get them filled with everything, right? So there, there's, there's this little curve of you need to be working with your insurance company and or your own personal adjuster that you, and, and I'll leave like the insurance calls, Mark, Mark Muller has been doing some Zooms. There are other people that, that are, you know, kind of going into the insurance realm and we're not going to go down that road, but uh, there are some things that are going to prevent you from taking all that stuff and sort of demoing your house in the next 30 days until it gets inspected. So that's going to be the rub, right? Do you, do you get it all out of there and, oh, we got FEMA to pay for this, but now you just lost $30,000 in insurance claim because you did something you shouldn't have done. So I think it's going to be a little challenging, but we, if, if you want that ability, we're working on that. Bull bags, dumpsters, uh, mass ways, like bigger barges than the barges that our island currently is served with coming in, taking it all away. It, it, it uh, I don't think that our current barge, even though I, I bet Mike Verona, like if he were on here, I don't know if he is, would push back and, and tell me I can handle it all. I think it's going to be very challenging to handle it all. Um, and so that is the goal to like push through as, as much as possible, as fast as possible. Um, let me take one from the, uh, the chat. Let's see. Oh, 501c3 stuff. Um, fundraiser. Yep. It's all mainly fundraiser and stuff like that. All right, uh, Paul Preston. <laughs> hey, by the way, great work, everyone. Uh, really, really happy about uh, Duncan's work, you know, on the main road. I mean, five wide now, so incredible. Uh, Swin, my question is just regular garbage, sorry, not debris, but like- Cash service. And food, garbage, where do we put it? Nicole did tell me she puts it in the main state dumpster. I I'm pretty sure that you, <laughs> you should take her out for that. Okay. <laughs> It wasn't my garbage. <laughs> so, but what do we do with that? Uh, yeah, so, so, so we have a process for that. So again, we're, uh, and, and I'll throw it out there what the process is gonna be. So if any of you are gonna come and individually do it yourselves, but uh, all the companies that we're gonna push out that, hey, they can go to your house and empty your fridge and freezer for you. Uh, Duncan is going to dig a big hole on his lot over there uh, on Point House Trail. And uh, you will dispose of all food items in there. Very important. They have to be unpackaged. Only food can go in that hole. You can't throw wrappers in it. You can't throw bottles in it. it okay, I'm not sure if that's going to work. Uh, <laughs> I put my beer bottles. I put everything in, in my garbage, my kitchen kitchen garbage you well, know well th then, then i'm not going to separate it out then, i got then, too much going on yeah then you, uh, right. that's just regular refuse trash right not just the food stuff uh you're gonna just have to hold on to it until uh danny and them start running some trash get some dumpsters over to throw it in i, I don't know where else you put it all right, all right let me make a suggestion here sure in back in business i'm pretty sure I, I saw half of his crew driving around on golf carts today on the island let's get uh, them to start going around again and picking up garbage if that's okay could i mean i've been going into houses and jenny's been going in others have been going in emptying up the refrigerators you know all that food all that shit it's stinking i mean it's going to be a mess if it's out. we're collecting a lot of garbage yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Just, yeah, so, so up here, I'm just saying. Yeah, so, just so, put on our, your list, our, right? our goal is to, to hopefully have Danny and or Verona at our meeting tomorrow. Um, they, they have yet, we, we, we haven't been able to pin them down. Again, they're, they're just trying to get their barges. To, to your point, if we don't have a barge and dumpsters and everything to take it away off the island, 
where do you what's your suggestion where should it go okay yeah i i, I don't know all right so so we I, have to be able to get it off the island it's, it's, totally it's a major agree. disaster i know it's yep. going to start stinking we need to get uh solutions quick hopefully we're we're, we're days away from that I'm, then, I'm, I'm with you i'm with you hey jenny had a jenny had a question too and then i think you can move on okay so i think it's a great idea with the wristband thing genius i i love it i think that that will work but i i i'm not gonna lie i mean is that for visitors coming in? And, no, it's and for workers. homeowners and workers, right? They're going uh, to be two different colors. Is that correct? That 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 is the idea right now. Yes. Okay, and and we're not even sure about getting um, deputies or somebody here to, you know, at night, mainly at night. That's that's our problem. I mean, yeah. We Daily, we will be asking when when does this start? When does this start? Like we're we're trying. If if we if we all think that in you know in the temporary you know the next few days or a week until that can happen that we need to hire some private security or take you know some people on the island who are willing to volunteer to be that security to to watch docks and beaches at night it that process in the safety and security is a very important thing we we spoke about it today um you know matt duncan mike phillips zach anyone want to chime in on you know sort of what we talked about i mean i I, I 100% think it needs to start like last night. I'm hearing from several people, they're seeing boats anchored at the beach, I, people walking through like between Nicole's house and the lemon draw our house. And we're like, who the heck is this? You know, you're in pink shorts and what, what, what in the world? Have to start so I, I, I that again. Okay. Well, we, we have to start now. Yeah, we'll 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 discuss it in in much more detail tomorrow in the meeting, um, and okay. and see what solution we can get going immediately. Okay. Well, in the meantime, I don't. I, I mean that that's not. I'm sorry. I'm frustrated. That's not a not good enough answer for me, Swin. I'm sorry because I've got. Well, I. Well, I mean, and I think I speak for just about everybody here. I mean, well, uh, well, lemon drop so, is protected. So, yeah. I'll tell you so, that. Yeah. Nobody so wants I'm, to come to the lemon drop. Yeah. So oh. I, I and the the rest of the the group are, are fully open to suggestions. Are, are there ideas? I think we need to hire an outside firm. Pink shorts should be banned from the island for sure. Uh, I'm against 100% pink shorts. What? Uh, I don't know who that pink is. Pink shorts. Uh, this is Doug Brown. I just have a, I have a tab open at Mangoes. I'm hoping that uh, Duncan can close it for me. <laughs> no one's laughing. It's not. I don't know. The shit is for real. Uh, I would suggest. I, I'm very glad. The and, one and, day. Yeah, One yeah, thing, guys, on a, on a serious note here, on a, on a serious note here, um, the the discussion about having two deputies full time on the island is real. So I've spoken at length with uh, the chief about this. He's put that request in, and let's not forget too that our captiva um, Lee Camp. Lee County uh, Sheriff Providers um, or, or LCSO officers, they're there. Lieutenant um, Sawicki, Deputy, Deputy Lusk, and also uh, their third uh, deputy, Deborah, they are on Captiva and they're only a few minutes away. So until we get those temporary um, CSO uh, people, we we, we do have um, three deputies on Captiva. Yeah. I think I think this is this is Matt. So from conversation we had today, we, there, there's there's some big uh, 
dockage space that the businesses on the island uh, control. And I've committed to basically closing off and taping off any of the, the docks that we have to, to, you know, not permit anybody to dock on, in, in our space uh, except for those that are that are known to be on the island. Um, Safety Harbor, I think, will do the same thing, and then, and then we can get with Mainstay and ask them to do the same thing. Um, and there's nothing better than community policing. So for the for the, it would be great to have a private firm to come out and do that. Um, but it's a direct communication. We've all talked about getting walkie-talkies. We we've got some uh, for our team, and they work fairly well. So maybe that's something that we can uh, discuss a little bit further. That if there is you know, that access communication with walkie-talkies that we have one channel, uh, you know, the boating channel for VHF is channel 16. You, you call channel 16, you get all Coast Guard, you get everything. So maybe we have a North Captiva channel that is a community channel that at nighttime everybody turns their radio to that channel, and that's how we communicate. If we see something, say something. Sounds good. Yeah, and that, 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 that is the goal of the wristbands is, is to, you know, distribute the wristbands uh, to, to anyone who's, you know, basically long term on the island, whether, you know, a known worker uh, or a homeowner. And then, you know, preferably if you are coming in for just a day trip, a temporary that you would have a different color. Um, so we, we kind of know who who's supposed to be here and, and is if you see something, say something. Um, and that helps us identify people without wristbands. Uh, if, you know, you shouldn't necessarily get in a confrontation, we're, we're going to set up a system where people can notify, you know, um, help. We, right now, we're, we, we've got a set walkie-talkies that we're starting to use because we can't currently communicate. Um, probably another reason not to come to the island if you feel unsafe, uh, because if you're out and about right now, you actually can't call anyone. You would have to get to a place with internet to even call 911. Um, as we get the wristbands, we, we don't have a solution in place on where you'll go to get them, but we will um, put that information out there, you know, over the next, you know, couple of days as, as we sort of figure out that system. It's, uh, you know, our, it was our second meeting today. Security you know, is a big part of that. It, we're honing in on that system. The ideas we came up so far were wristband, increased, presence by the um, sheriff's office. And then we're talking about some other sort of uh, visual things to, to maybe, you know, uh, distract, you know, keep people from coming. Uh, Steve Holt. Thanks, Swim. Uh, I served 24 years as a county commissioner in Indiana and uh, we did ice storms and tornadoes and floods and bookkeeping was huge. And if every one of your teams will document daily the time that they are spending in whatever they are doing in terms of man hours and materials, it will be huge. And if that cannot be recreated, we're in a pickle. And secondarily, someone should talk to the Lee County Commissioner's Office and see what kind of connection we have with them to make sure that they're the conduit that we get these reimbursements because I believe a governmental entity has to do it and UCCA would not be in a position to do that unless you've learned something that I'm not aware of. Uh, Duncan or Matt, you wanna comment on that? Yeah. So yeah. So we're we're tracking uh, everything that we're doing by the day and the hours we're spending out there and the materials we've got. We've got receipts and and that's that's a great great point to that. Um, and with the FEMA stuff, obviously that's going to come later, uh, unless they're going to start writing checks tomorrow. But we we've got several employees and I'm sure like much of of uh, the other businesses that you know rely on us to to get them a paycheck every week. So um, that's why. I, you know, myself and I know some of the other businesses have said, you know, we're going to continue to pay our guys and we'll keep track of it, keep the bookkeeping uh, up to date and, and um, continue to just serving. Well, I'd pile on the volunteer hours. I'd track everybody that's working on every one of these committees 
and see if we can't get reimbursement. And certainly for the 103,000 that UCCA is throwing in to kind of jumpstart things, I mean, that should all be reimbursable. And th th I don't think that's gonna work through you, Matt. I think it's gonna have to go through Lee County, but I may be mistaken. No, no, you're 100% you're correct. And that, that, that's fantastic insight um, from, from your experience. I'm just saying personally that, that we are keeping track of ours so that we'll submit to FEMA. And I, and I believe that the other uh, entities are, are doing the same. Um, I, you know, obviously don't know how they they do their payroll and run their businesses, you know, on the internal side. But talking with with Duncan and some of the others, um, I, I understand that to be be true. But that that's that's fantastic insight for you to bring up in this conversation. So thank you. I, I, I want to. Uh, and also, I do think that the. Uh, oh, I do also think that the Upper Captiva Fire Department. Um, We'll be looking to reach out to uh, Commissioner Ruain, um, and um, I know that's not UCCA, but there, there's definitely going to be um, some effort on the uh, side of the uh, fire department. Um, so we'll keep you posted in our next commissioner meeting on that. Yeah. Uh, and I, I want to underscore, you know, again, in, in our meetings and, you know, conversations with everyone who's working, it, it is emphasized that uh, we intend to make sure they're well taken care of and, and paid. And, and, you know, I, I've specifically said to Duncan and everyone, like, you, you need to get paid. You got to keep up with everything. So none of us should expect uh, our island businesses to uh, work for free on this. Uh, we should expect personally to donate money and, and any assistance we can to the island businesses and workers, but they, they need to, to make money and be working and have their employees working. Easy so, yeah. um, so as we push out, you know, the available businesses and vendors that can help you with your homes, please utilize them. Uh, Lisa? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to give some, pers can you hear me? Yes. I just wanted to give everyone some perspective of um, a homeowner coming out to the island. We came with three boats of supplies and we made that decision after videos of our home. Yeah, there was stuff trashed outside, but we didn't know until we got <laughs> here that our water was completely shut off because the storm damaged not only our water line to our pump, but also our water line to our septic. So everybody's doing great things and we're trying to get that rectified, but there's so many considerations. If you think your house is sound and safe and you're, you wanna come here and do all those things, that's great, but there's so many layers of consideration to what that means. Um, the golf carts aren't charging right. So you might get one trip to bring your garbage and then it's dead. And the people that are here working cannot be towing your golf carts and helping with those kinds of things. And so while I appreciate, because I am one of you, the importance of coming to check on your home and doing all those things, um, we thought we'd come here and I have solar chargers and solar generator. I have all this stuff and none of it's working. So um, the other thing is, is that the supply, yeah. can you hear me still? Yes, you get the, the supply chain. So, uh, you know, we brought umpteen gall gallons of gas and, and propane, you know, you, you can't run your generator for more than two to three hours safely. So people that think they're just gonna come out and plug in a propane tank and be fine, there's so much more of a consideration before that. And so because I'm here now, I think I would have always sent the supplies, of course, but I'm not sure we would have come to think we were gonna set up camp at our house 
And so if any of you are still really adamant on coming, I would say come with the attitude that you're not coming for your house, you're coming for the community and you come to support the efforts that are going around you. Our houses are all important, of course, but when you see these people who are doing all this stuff, I mean, I'm emotional because it's an emotional thing. And so I will be one. If you want to reach out to me on Facebook, if you want me to check your house, I'll, I'll help you. I'm here now. And I don't know when I'm leaving. If I can get water to our house, I might stay. If I can't, well, I, I can't. Um, but you all know me on Facebook. We were sadly going to host the homeowners party on the 22nd. Um, we'll do it again for sure. We'll do it again as soon as the island is built up. But um, I'm just here to say, if you think you're going to come, come with the idea to help the community, not just check on your house. Please. Thank you, Lisa. Holly? Thanks, mm -hmm. Wayne. I was on the island on Saturday, and I, it's overwhelming the amount of I think we lost you. That was my hey, fault. Sorry. Sorry, Holly. <laughs> um, so I was on the island on Saturday and it's overwhelming the amount of debris, particularly landscape debris. So I wanted to see where we were I... with getting a burn site because the chippers take fuel uh, and the chippers okay. take a lot of manpower. So I just, I know in the past I'd heard that we've been able to burn. Have we made any progress with being able to get a burn site maybe on state property? So in, in our meeting today, and, and I'll let um, you know, Duncan and, and, and AJ and, and maybe Matt kind of dive in and speak to this, uh, it was determined it would be a lot less work and a lot faster and a lot easier to bring, we have, I believe we have five chippers on the island and to have the crews running those, take them right up and down, to, to move everything down there is, is more work than to chip it in place. And, and I'll, I'll let the experts kind of speak to that, but that's, that was the decision that, uh, yeah. that was made. And I can see that the moving is definitely an issue if you don't have tractors and grapples. I, my thought is just that all that debris creates moisture and invites more bugs and it never leaves the island. If you've seen any major chipping projects around, you know, my neighbors chip before the storm and it's like a foot deep of just yuck. But I, I understand so, the moving issue. Yeah, and, and, and I think part of it also is, is you know, we start moving it, uh, we're in a, we're in a, a very challenging uh, time to get to anyone, right? So we got to start that process with the state. And, you know, uh, Mark, Mark Muller, you know, was sort of in all that back in Charlie. And it's, I don't think it's something like we're going to get someone on the phone and get uh, someone to approve, oh yeah, take it all down and dump it on the state land uh, in the next two weeks or three weeks. And we just let it sit there uh, not working and, and then, um, you, you know, will, will they let us, you know, burn it? I mean, I guess we could all determine, just don't ask and ask forgiveness and go take it and dump it out there. But then we just have a dump of stuff. And if they don't burn it, then it's out there. So Duncan, Matt, AJ, anyone want to chime in on that? I, I probably, I probably talked to Duncan the most out of, out of anybody, um, and he's been doing a ton of work. I know that Rainier has been working. Um, we're going to have my chipper and Duncan chipper both working. I know that Sherman's been doing it. And um, it, I think, I think the best way to think about this is that if we can chip the, the stuff that's in the road right now and spread it evenly across wherever, wherever it's, it's fallen, um, it'll be easier to come back and then clean those areas up. And then if we need to have this massive horticultural uh, barge, party, I guess I'll call it, uh, it'll be easier to do that rather than all, all of the debris to one area, try to either create this burn site or a horticultural uh, exodus. Um, it's going to create a lot more man hours. And I think between the, the business owners on the island, we've got a lot of people that are wanting to work, willing to work that, that can come do this very quickly. And the plan that we kind of have in place now um, is to just chip it as, as it lies and create the pathways because when we have the pathways we can get the machinery to do more of the micro stuff 
but right now we got to focus on the macro. Um, AJ, you got a little bit more experience in the roads and stuff like that, and, and Duncan, you, you probably can can chip in too, pun intended. Yeah, I, I um, definitely well said, Matt. I agree with you. Um, you know, maybe a little bit farther down the line once we get um, you know the main roads uh, chipped up. Um, that is the easiest method right now. Um, so once we get the main roads chipped up and maybe independent homeowners could have a site um, that they can bring debris to, or some might choose to have their landscaper um, bring their chipper into their yard. We're just not in that phase yet because um, we're focusing on the main roads, but I think that's a good point. I think we can maybe have a combination of both. Um, that would be the ideal solution in my mind. Yeah, and, and to add to that, and just so everyone understands, the, the, the project right now on the chipping is to clear the roads for, for two reasons. One, just to create further access for machinery and, and access into places. But we've got to clear, the, if, if we expect LCEC to get us online with power as soon as possible, we need to offer them a clean slate when they arrive. So right now, everything's been moved to the side of the roads. Their, their you know, limbs and, and brush and everything, if they came in right now, they would either tell us, get this stuff out of here, or they would have to do it themselves delaying. So the, the chipping of the, of the material that's on the road is still a temporary solution. Almost all of you are going to have a massive amount of brush to remove from your yards. So that burn pit idea still might be something we get to uh, when you're removing huge trees that are down and brush in your yard. So, Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, who's next? Hold on. Uh, Denise. Oh, you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, sorry, <laughs> a little bit technologically. Uh, anyway, so I wanna thank everybody so much for everything that everyone is doing. Obviously we all wanna say that, but um, so I saw some, some posts on the Facebook pages about um, people breaking down doors and um, I, obviously they have to do their job and they're trying to find people and making sure that everyone is okay. I was just curious about that situation in general on the island. Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm gonna make, you know, the shortest statement about that as we can, because uh, that in and of itself could devolve into a two hour, um, you know, just a, a everyone upset about it. So uh, the National Guard was here along with another fire uh, district, fire department from the East Coast and they, they had, uh, they took one person uh, in their teams from our fire district. And as I understand it, there are these different levels of um, expertise. Like there's a, there's a, you know, I don't know all their times. There's like a technician, uh, there, there's, you know, a, I guess an EMS person with them, the National Guard guy, and then our district. And uh, in a disaster like this, it is uh, a federal mandate that they go door to door after a disaster and they check a house to make sure that there's no one in it that has been harmed, that needs help, or that are deceased. And so it's a National Guard thing and, and the system, they came in, they started doing it here. They did it everywhere. They did it all on Pine Island. In, in all these other areas. And they found people, they found bodies, not on our island. Uh, and what they do is they go in and they gotta get in the doors. And so if the door's locked, they are prying the doors open to get in. They go check every single room and make sure it's clear. And then they tag your house with basically the date, the time, and there are different codes that they do uh, of that tell you know people that someone was rescued from here or basically deceased do not enter because then they would bring in a different team and, and everything and so they started doing that on our island unannounced to any of us but I don't think the government announces that to anyone 
uh, our community, uh, I, I believe, felt that they knew everyone who stayed on the island and that everyone was accounted for. But the truth is, we don't know that because I don't know and none of you know the 400 owners who own on this island. Those 400 owners are not in the Facebook group. Those 400 owners, you know, don't all communicate and all. So you, you don't know that there was no one else there unless you yourself went door to door and did a check. I'm not going to speak to uh, if I agree with the process, if I uh, a, agree or disagree that our, our fire district should have handled it differently. It, it was done. Um, from what I've gotten some feedback from a few people that went and looked, yes, there, there are some damaged doors. There, there's a few damaged um, uh, door frames and everything. So some people are going to have issues. Uh, I, I'll tell you that I personally didn't like it. Uh, is it yesterday? I'm sorry, I'm losing days. Yesterday, I almost got arrested. Uh, because I got in an altercation with our uh, assistant fire chief and then our chief and we were yelling pretty big and so they called the sheriff and then we you know calmed down and they called the sheriff off but they still came and they warned me that if it happened again that they they were told to arrest um, and so it's just to a certain point what's done is done it, 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 it's just, the, the whole thing is just a big, you know, natural disaster. Uh, th there's just a lot of things that none of us know through those processes. And um, however you feel about uh, our fire chief or our fire commissioners, there are processes, you know, there, right? They're, you know, they, they're, some of them are elected, some of them are hired. Um, that's the place to, to go do it. I'm okay. You know, I don't want to devolve into that tonight. If we want to have a separate town hall that is specifically about that topic or the fire district, I'm totally open to it. Everyone telling me we want to do that. We'll set it up. But that's, that's really what happened. But the reality is no one truly knows that they knew everyone was safe. But whatever happened, uh, uh, the the um, the reaction to it, and I don't know if it was triggered by at fire district level or truly at National Guard level. It it made the National Guard le leave. They left the next morning, and they did not complete that mission. Uh, there, so they didn't check every home, and but they left. And those were I can't remember how many guys it was. I think it was twelve total. And they were going to be here for four more days to help continue clearing the roads and everything, but we lost that. And, and so in the chat, I know a couple of people have asked, can we get National Guard for security? Can't, can't they stay out overnight? We chased them off. So um, I don't, well, I don't know. I, it, it, for our meeting tomorrow, maybe we can talk. Is there, is there a way to get the National Guard back for some security? We'll ask that question. But that's, that's kind of what happened. And um, you know. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that. Because on the Facebook page, I was confused about like, what was actually happening Were doors being kicked in or not. And it was just kind of confusing. But, uh, and I, I can see exactly why, you know, what their mission was, obviously, they want to make sure people are safe. And that makes sense, too. Um, it just seems like maybe it wasn't the right way. Um, and then my second question is, do we know when um, it will be safe for the fire department to be back on the island to make sure that if there's an emergency that everyone's okay. Uh, so I, 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 go ahead. This is Matt again. Um, in the meeting yesterday and, and today, uh, and maybe one of the fire commissioners want to want to speak to this since I'm not a fire commissioner, but I, I will, I will say something about what the, the meeting after the, we found out that the doors were quote unquote being kicked down. The guys that were going and looking for the bodies and the, the people that may or may not have been in those homes um, are experts at getting into homes. And so they weren't, it wasn't as blunt and as bold as they were kicking doors down. They were doing everything they could to Jimmy locks and to get in. And for the most part of those homes, they were able to Jimmy the lock, like you would see on a movie of a, of a car thief getting into a car door and then getting in and then tagging the house. So 
Um, Sheriff uh, or Lieutenant uh, Starwicky said that, look, these guys are away from their homes, and we ran out of body bags the day before on Matt Lachey. And in his words, he's they, they, they're looking for saving lives, and they could care less about the door that they're kicking down. From a community service standpoint, they're, they're, they're trying to serve us and save lives. Um, is it unfortunate to get a door kicked in? Absolutely. I don't want my door kicked in or anything like that, but we gotta, we gotta give them a little bit of grace and, um, and, th- and stand behind the people that are serving us and our service members. I, I, I grew up and my dad was a cop too. So I, I kind of understand what that's like to go on those missions to serve in those, those fields and have a lot of military family. So, um, my heart goes out to those guys that were there that are trying to help us that are, that are, that are part of that community. And, you know, nobody's perfect. No leader's perfect. None of us are perfect in this call. And um, I, I just I, I want to see us, you know, come together and get behind those guys as well and um, not get caught up on some of the, the you know, the, the minor things, you know, in, in the the, uh, the spectrum of what we're really dealing with. So I guess that's my two cents. Maybe one of the fire commissioners want to talk about the conversation um, referring to the other thing. I, I don't mind weighing in a little bit on um, what the first uh, 24 to 48 hours look like uh, for our fire chief, who is the professional that we've hired. He's trained. Um, I'm not. I'm in the financial planning business. Uh, we rely on him to make these kinds of judgment calls. Um, just to give you the incredibly short version as I can possibly get to it, our fire department was closed um, and, and, and ordered for a mandatory evacuation. Pine Islands Fire Department was closed. All four fire districts, uh, all four fire stations were closed. They pulled all the assets to the dry side of Matt Lachey. Um, Our equipment was parked at fire station number four. Our fire chief spent the night in the command center in Cape Coral in a concrete structure with other fire chiefs. Um, they actually did a little recon in the middle of the night to see if what the road looked like going through Matt Lachey. It obviously was gone. Uh, the next morning, we launched, um, and again, this is, this is uh, by the way, the fire chief documented this, and I think ultimately we should release this to everybody, but he released this to the commissioners. The, uh, the fire boat was launched out of Pine Island Station Number 4 where they went to assess the condition of the road. Obviously it was completely gone. The roads, the road was out, the bridges were out. There were literally people in the water. Um, there were rescues, um, there were down structures. They ultimately transported the chiefs of Pine Island across the broken roadway to Yucatan. They walked their way down to the fire station at Stringfellow and brought equipment back. Our chief was then picked up and brought to Pine Island number one. He was given a truck and a small crew with chainsaws and they cut their way northerly up um, Stringfellow to determine whether the marinas were open. Because the last thing you wanna do is parachute your command officer back on the island with no idea what the infrastructure looks like. If, if he's there without communications, without electricity, without water, without any sense about what's going on um, between the dots, it's foolish to have that person sitting there. He, he's no more valuable than, than any of us. So uh, they determined that the, uh, uh, they, they actually had to cut their way the Pineland Marina, uh, down debris, power lines, and ultimately determined that the marina itself was probably intact. Um, the crew boat was on its side off of the chocks. Um, I don't even know the status of it at, at this point. I'm told, I was told as a result of that communication that Four Winds Marina was hopefully um, accessible as well. And then they then retreated back to the Pine Island stations that was the first full day, uh, body tagging, rescuing people, getting around the down roads and determining whether the infrastructure to our island was in place. Um, I think that was a great use of, uh, of a first day. 
And hey, uh, hey, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't want to, I, I didn't want this to continue to be a, a, a chief and fire district thing. Can we, can we maybe do a, a fire district one? I, I, I'm happy to, I, I'm, 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 everyone in the chat's like, I agree. Move, move on. And this and, thing's it's probably gone a long way. Um, I do think, you know, there's an awful lot of chat from a very small group that seems to have that same mantra about um, the fire department wasn't around. And I think, um, I think everybody ought to call time out and, and relax a little bit. Yeah. So can we move on? And, and yeah, I'm, and I'm happy to, to do another one at, at some point. Uh, John? Two, two questions. One is, can we bring gas powered four by fours um, out to the island? Would, or are we gonna be struck down with that? Uh, it, 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 my opinion is it is not illegal. It's frowned upon, obviously, by residents. It's uh, it's uh, not illegal. So yeah, I mean, I think you got to do what you got to do. Okay. And second, or second, just a statement. Um, I was there Saturday, and I can tell you guys, um, it's it's pictures don't do it justice. Okay. Um, I definitely got sick from it. I spent all day yesterday um, in the restroom. Um, and I have a couple of sores that weren't there on Saturday. Um, so just be aware that um, if you do go out there, you're, you're rolling the dice, guys. We definitely walk through sewage. There's videos of me gagging. Um, it's, you're rolling the dice. That's all. So I think like Lisa said, if you're if you want to give supplies and stuff like that, coordinate with a captain to drop off. And um, if you want to come out, come for the day, but go back and uh, you're rolling the dice. That's it. Thanks, John. Uh, Denise. Yes. Hi. <laughs> oh, hi, you're back. Oh, did, you had your hand up, so you have it up from our earlier. Oh, sorry, that was from uh, before. Yeah, no yes. worries, all good. So, sorry, and I just wanted to say that like, my, my question earlier about um, them coming George's door, door was not to stir up any controversy. It was just, there was a lot of questions on Facebook about what was sure. going on. And I was, I was just curious. I, I wasn't like trying to um, start any issues. So it sounds like it kind of went a little bit too far, but that was my, my question was like, what happened with that? And then the fire department thing was just curious about, um, they're saying don't come to the island because the fire department's not there. I'm just wondering when will it be safe? And when will they be there to make sure that um, people are safe? That's all. I, I wasn't, I, I, I see a lot of, I'm, I'm looking at yeah. a lot of chats on the side and I'm like, oh my gosh. I, I, That's I think okay. I we're we're, uh, we're going we're, we're gonna to move on and, and anyone who has their hand up now, we're going we're gonna to go through and then we're, we're going to end. It's a long Thank one. you. I, I promise Thank we'll, you. Do, we'll, we'll keep doing them. It's important that we keep everyone informed. We, we want to hear the feedback. From, from this call, I guarantee the team is going to talk about a dozen things tomorrow that came from, you know, from this. So, Lisa? So, uh, a follow-up to my previous comment is, how are you managing um, the garbage? So, I know we talked about it a little bit, but those of us that are on island and those of us that aren't, is there a process, and then Nicole's in charge of part of this, if there's, if there's things that we can do to help remediate in the current, to help people feel a bit better about not coming here in the, inter in the interim, is there an organization for that where we can go house by house and remove some of that stuff? Because I experienced it yeah. firsthand, I get it. Yeah. Um, we figured that out, but how are we doing that house by house? Um, is yep. so, yeah, sorry. Can I, stop, can I stop you and answer that? So, so that that's part of the the push out that we'll send tomorrow of all the island businesses and vendors and workers who are available to do that. So, here's the complication on that, and and I want to open up the 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 last situation. But if you want me to get, if, if you want us, you know, to say, hey, can we go door to door and empty the refrigerators and take care of any trash that might be rotting in there? Well, I have to have your key or your door code, or I got to pry in your door. So the goal is to push out, we now know 
it, it, literally over the last 48 hours, you know, post storm, none of the businesses and none of the workers were prepared to do anything because they were just finishing surviving themselves, right? So in, in the last 48 hours, we know the businesses and workers who are available. We're going to push that out. You, you can choose who you want, wh whether it's Tortuga or Shally's or Fred or, you know, Nicole, whoever, you'll, you'll have options. And then you will give uh, your key code or let them know who on the island keeps your key for you. Or if, if, if you're going to have to overnight your key, you're going to have to figure that out. Um, and, and that process of them, you know, emptying your fridge and freezer and getting that um, stuff out. I, I will say, I think it does underscore the fact that if we have dozens or hundreds of people on the island, when you're here, you're going to create waste, you have to eat, you have to do stuff, you're going to bring stuff, and it's just going to create trash that at this moment, we do not have a path to take off the island. Which I do agree with, Swen, um, having been here now. Um, but having been here now, and I thought I prepared my, ha my house as best as I could, and I had no idea, which maybe we're newbies, but many others are like that. And so those of us that are on the ground that are here, we can help with some of that stuff. And I think that's the part that's important. So I, I guess um, I'll reiterate that do not come unless you want to be part of the team that helps to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, thank you. All right, we're, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up pretty quick here, Carrie. Okay, thanks. Um, so this is Carrie Malloy. I just want to say, and I know it's been said a million times. Thank you to everybody who's been on this island. I'm particularly grateful to the Shelley's team who did not leave, who have taken such exceptional care of our house, and I want to take care of them and other people. So not to perseverate. I'm really interested in this 501c3 thing. I have experience doing this. I founded a school that's a 501c3. I know there's a steering committee. So I believe the Murphys and some other people are interested in this. I'm just going to put my email address in the chat if anybody wants to talk to me, if that's all right. Yeah. Who has some ideas to share? Because I really do want to support these people who've done incredible stuff for us. I, I, I would invite you all to, to reach out to this team uh, okay. there, there, there's no doubt that it, it is fine. Like we, we want the community to, to be involved. And so if there's expertise to create a, a separate subcommittee uh, for fundraising with, with you and others, and we hand that off, the community has to be open to that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I really, I really don't kind of care how it happens, but I started a 501c3 and through a congressman contact, got that number two weeks. It can be done. Awesome. Thank you, Carrie. Okay, yeah. Uh, Norman? Yes, thank you. Can you hear me okay? We can. Pretty yeah. answer. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm up in Alaska. I just got a couple of quick questions. I'm sorry I was 20 minutes late to the meeting. You may have already covered it, but do you have a ballpark how deep the water got in, in uh, Safety Harbor Club? Like, is it three feet? Was it eight feet? I'm just trying to make some assessments on the property, um, how deep the water get, and then that helps with my concern level. Thank you. Jeff, are you still on? Do you have any idea from any feedback on that? You may have jumped off. The, the only feedback that I had, um, because uh, the McDonald's uh, stayed and, and they were at Gypsy Wind o over on Oro Pesos and Bill Fry stayed and he, he was across the street, uh, is that they felt the surge that came down that street was perhaps eight to 10 foot, but like just up a ways. It, it didn't sweep completely all the way up the street and across the island. Um, so it came up um, pretty high. Uh, just kind of, you know, in the close sections of the house. But that's the only feedback I personally have from anyone who is here. When in, uh, in Safety Harbor Club, we had less than two feet everywhere and, and most of it less than one foot. So the surge was minimal in the club, but that's all I know as far as the island. Yeah, okay. I think there are areas that didn't uh, really experience any. Yeah, I was going to say for, uh, for the...
Uh, we we lost you. Uh, we lost you, Tom. Did Damien speak? Someone just send that picture. Oh. All right. Uh, we'll get we'll get back to Tom. Uh, Lacey. Yeah. So obviously, it's you know it's been said over and over. It's not a good time to come. Um, but of course, you know we're all anxious to get our houses not only secured but get the insurance process rolling. So like right now, I have an adjuster and I have um, someone that can do all the work, you know, on my houses and not that that's going to happen tomorrow anyway, you know, we have to get materials and whatnot, but is there any estimation as to when we can start doing that? I mean, I don't want to bring them to the island and have them get sick, but at the same time, you know, I don't want to wait and wait while my house is rotting away and getting infested with rats. Yeah, so I think, um, you know, it's a little bit of a fluid situation. I think we're days away. I don't think we're weeks away. Um, you know, o over the next few days, and especially, you know, I, I think five days from now is a, is a key moment. If that temporary bridge uh, is established in Matt Lachey and the, and the roads uh, leading up from Burton Store to the drawbridge and then, and then roads after Matt Lachey going in, uh, are indeed fixed and passable by automobiles and, you know, everyone from Island Club to Davenport Verona to all of the different captains can start accessing Pine Island and, and most especially the, the commercial marina. Uh, it, it changes things, and especially if Island Girl can, can start working out of uh, Pineland again, and we have those our two normal ferries running. It's a game changer, right? You you can bring people on and off easily and quickly. You're you're right. There's this curve right now, and and depending on how early people filed their claims, uh, yep. your your adjusters will want to start coming out, and and you'll want that, right? Because that if if you're able to get that early, you can start your work sooner and everything. Well, so, yeah, you I, don't want to get, get in line behind thousands of other people because every day that goes by, we're getting further and further back on that list, you know? So well, I, I think, I think Mark Muller is probably a better expert at it, but I, I, I think the suggestion would be, you know, uh, whether you're going to do it on your own or, or hire an adjuster and attorneys is, is get your claim filed and just, and basically just say it's catastrophic. You, you don't have to give it any detail. They're going to come look. So i you know, I think that's the suggestion I heard is, is get that file. But, but yeah, I think, look, I, I talked with Safe Harbor today. I talked with Captain Tim with Island Girl. Um, you know, this team, which is an integral part of, of the transportation and the work, you know, it, 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 I think it's actually shocking. It's coming together faster than I think any of us can imagine, as, especially the, the Matt Lachey bridge uh, issue. We're still going to have supply chain things with fuel they're, you know they're, they're gonna have the bridge on Matt Lachey but there's still not gonna be power for weeks um so there's still gonna be challenges we're not gonna have power for a long time so um yeah I, again you know I don't you know uh, I, I'm, I'm I'm new at communicating to a full community so if any of my communication of do not come uh made anyone feel like don't come forever don't come for weeks you know, I left it open ended. Uh, I think we're getting there. I, I, I think it's coming faster. I'm, my my prayer is that the LCEC thing will come much faster than we all think. So, uh, thank you, David. I was gonna say, and he doesn't ever pray. So um, I'm the chaplain for the fire district, uh, and my primary focus is to be support to Chief Martin and to the, the firefighters there. Um, I did have some, I have had some brief, you know, eat texts from Chief Martin, but as Swins talked about, you know, the communication's pretty tough there. Uh, he did ask me to clarify, and I, and I did, there was a couple of questions and asked or statements made that their fire district wasn't on, nor were serving the community. And Chief said that you should all know that all fire services have been restored upon his, their return, which was, back last week. So 911 calls are being honored, responded to, um, and they're staffing as they can. So uh, they're there and available. So um, just understand that the, I think that was kind of left open-ended that that's not the case. Uh, and I think that's not true. 
Um, so just know that's the case. Um, and also I would say just as, uh, as everyone's said is, uh, everyone involved is a tragedy and a, and a devastating situation, and um, everybody has been emotional and, and doing their best. But I do think we all have to remember each other that we need to provide dignity and respect to everybody. Um, and uh, there, there, there are lines that are going to get crossed, and, and so we just got to be careful not to do damage because we all have to live together after the fact. Uh, in all those emergency situations, just like COVID, People made mistakes or choices or could have done something differently in the heat of battle. Uh, and uh, I think we just have to have grace and mercy for everybody and, and understand we're all doing the best we can. And once we get past this place uh, and, and everybody spoke to it, that I, I do see the community come together. And, and I think it's a, it's a good thing. And it's the only way it's going to work. So uh, that'd be my what I have to say about that. All right. Well, with that, with that, I think we'll wrap it. Uh, again, the goal here is to keep everyone informed. Um, I, you know, I, I don't want to drag everyone through. I mean, we're we're in two and a half hours almost here, so it's a long one. It's been a long day, uh, but you know, we'll do this. I, I, UCCA and, and this group, I think, is is allowing me to sort of lead these. Um, so if we need to have another one in two days or four days or whatever, we'll, we'll sort of determine that to really just keep everyone informed uh, at the progress. I'll kind of leave it that, you know, we've sort of built this project management platform. Uh, Jeremy Freeman is helping us to sort of manage that. So all these team leads we mentioned uh, will be in contact daily, giving feedback, um, you know, positive or negative. And if it's negative, the, the team will dive in and, and solve it. But look, I, um, as far as access and supply chains, things are improving and you, you, we just have a great team working on it and it's going to get better. So anyway, I, you can always, any of you can reach out to me directly. I know you can reach out to Duncan or Matt or anyone else, you know, on the team, but please know we're, we're all working a really hard daily. So, you know, it may take us hours or a day to, to respond. So. Swen, you're doing a great Thank job. You. Thanks for, for putting it together. Thank you. Well done. Well done, Swen. Right. Thank you, guys. Everyone have a, a great night and more info to come. Okay.